Do you know the real impacts of your products and supply chain? What about the living and working conditions of the people who make your goods? Companies must now comply with strict modern slavery laws across the globe. Consumers too are holding brands accountable for their social and environmental impacts. ATLC is the exclusive representative of the Ethical Trade Alliance in Australia and New Zealand. We can help you take control of your supply chain, modern slavery auditing, sustainable procurement accreditation, sustainable freight and logistics programs. Ensure your supply chain is not harming people or the planet. Protect your brand reputation and do the right thing. Contact us at ATLC today and start to reduce the negative impacts of your global supply chains. Hi everyone, my name is Lawrence Christoffels. I'm the host of this very special series called ASEAN in Focus, proudly brought to you by Trade Australia Show here on Import Export TV. This whole series is all about showcasing the fantastic opportunities for inbound, outbound trade and investment across all those 10 member nations of ASEAN. To kick it off, today's episode, we're going to start with Malaysia, you know, one of the powerhouses across ASEAN, and it's a real driving force around really making sure the ASEAN whole region uh, is a global, global force and a global opportunity. So to kick off today's episode, I'm delighted to be joined by Jamila Ibrahim from Mar Trade here in Melbourne. Hi, Jamila, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you for the invitation. My pleasure. It's a great uh, opportunity to, to have you on the show and to be our, our first guest on this very special series, ASEAN in Focus. Jamila, before we kick off, please tell uh, me and the audience a little bit about Mar Trade, your role, and how you work with uh, Malaysian exporters. Yeah, okay. Thank you, uh, Lawrence. My name is Jamila Ibrahim. I'm from the Malaysia External Trade Development Corporation. In short, we call it MATRID. Uh, MATRID is one of the agencies under Ministry of International Trade and Industry, MITI. And uh, uh, currently, we have 46 uh, trade officers all over the world. And for this region, for Oceania, uh, we are the only office uh, as a representative office here. So, um, uh, as you know, my, my office not only cover uh, Australia, we also cover New Zealand and other Oceania countries. And our main uh, function is to promote Malaysia's exports. And um, as the National Trade Promotion Agency, we assist Malaysian exporters uh, to explore foreign uh, market. And in, instead of that, we also give them training uh, to enhance their international marketing skills. And for Malaysian exporters also, we provide financial uh, assistance like grants for uh, their uh, trade promotional activities. Yeah. Fantastic. I think there's a, there's a range of great support programs that Martrade offer and obviously for exporters coming out of Malaysia, but even for overseas buyers to come in and do the, the trade missions or even the virtual trade missions, those support programs that you're running. Jamila, what about the the industry sectors, especially for Australian companies, what are the key um, inbound outbound sectors that you see between Malaysia and Australia? Okay, um, let me explain first our uh, total exports in 2019 to the world. 
uh, our total exports in 2019 uh, amounted to 240.2 billion US dollar. So our top five exports in 2019 are electrical and electronic products uh, that contribute about 37.5% of share of our exports to the world. Uh, second ranking is petroleum products, uh, contributed about 7.2%, chemical and chemical products 5.8%, palm oil and uh, palm oil based agricultural products is 4.4% uh, and followed by LNG 4.3% of share. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 and, a huge, uh, and huge also number. for 2019, uh, exports of our manufactured goods uh, value at uh, 834.17 uh, ring, billion ringgit, uh, accounted for a larger share of total exports at 84.6 percent uh, in 2018, and then followed by mining goods, uh, contributed 8.1 percent of share and agriculture goods 6.6% uh, of total exports in 2019. Wow, yeah, fantastic, huge numbers. What about the, the current and future trade opportunities between Australia specifically and Malaysia? Okay, Malaysia and Australia. Okay, uh, let me share first uh, with you the Malaysia-Australia trade performance in 2019 because Australia has always uh, registered to be our important trading partner. And uh, in 2019, Malaysia, uh, Australia was Malaysia's 13th largest trading partner, uh, 12th largest export destination, and 11th largest source of import. That is in 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 uh, uh, in uh, Malaysia's uh, view. Uh. Yeah. Um, in the same year, Malaysia also was uh, Australia's 12th largest trading partner and uh, 12 largest export de destination and seven largest exports uh, uh, source of import. So the top five that uh, the top five products that we export to Australia, uh, the first one are crude petroleum, uh, contributed about 24.3%, followed by petroleum products, 15.9%. Uh, so if you combine uh, the top one and the top two, it already contributed more than 40% yeah. of our exports to Australia. And then the third largest uh, our exports to Australia uh, for the electrical and electronic products, uh, it contributed uh, about 15.6%, followed by manufacturers of metal, 4.5%, uh, and manufacturers of plastics, 4%. Wow. Great. And, you know, what are your what are your thoughts, Jamil? I mean, ASEAN, as we've talked about, is made up of these 10 member nations. Uh, Malaysia is a very important player. How do you how do you explain the role of Malaysia across the ASEAN region? I know that, uh, you know, you amongst all 10 countries, you all participate and collaborate really, really well. What's Malaysia's role? Okay, um, uh, in 2019, ASEAN remained as our leading regional trading partner. Uh, ASEAN, which accounted 26.6% of Malaysia's total trade in 2019, a value at 488.91 billion ringgit. And exports to ASEAN amounted to 284.03 billion, uh, contributed about 28.8% of Malaysia's total export. So it shows how important ASEAN to Malaysia. Um, Singapore always uh, continue to be our largest export uh, market in ASEAN with a share of 48.2% of our total exports to the region. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, for our exports to Vietnam uh, for last year, uh, it recorded a growth of 1.2% uh, to reach uh, 34.73 billion ringgit. And uh, as you know, uh, Malaysia currently trades with more than 200 countries all over the world. And uh, Malaysia, uh, we can say, can be uh, the gateway to ASEAN countries because ASEAN uh, population is more than 600 uh, million. So uh, that will be, um, uh, how to say, for the, the Australian uh, importers. Yeah. You can get your supply from Malaysia and you can also use Malaysia as a hub to yeah. re-export the products to other ASEAN countries. Yeah, fantastic. It's a very, very powerful springboard into the whole region there. Yeah. So, yeah. And also uh, for the Australian uh, Australian uh, importers, you can also take advantage on a few that FTA that we have signed between Malaysia, 
uh, and uh, Australia and also ASEAN Aswata, ASEAN Australia, New Zealand FTA, FTA. the free trade area. Yeah. yeah, there's two FTAs there to, to leverage, as you say, the NAFTA and the ANSFTA are very yeah, powerful yeah, FTAs. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Look, Jamila, it's been a pleasure to speak to you. Just before, we're going to speak to Fatma Ahmed as well in the same episode from MITRE. But before we do, what are your tips and advice for Australian companies to consider ASEAN and Malaysia? What's the best tips and advice you'd like to give them? The first thing you have to contact our office. Yeah. Yeah. They can uh, contact our office. Uh, uh, our telephone number is 8600 or they can just drop us an email, uh, melbourne at matre.gov.my. Or if uh, COVID is over, you can always drop by to our office at level 7, 432 St Kilda Road. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I know you do amazing work, Jamila. Congratulations on all the work you do here across Australia and the region to promote Malaysian exporters. You do a fantastic job. You put on some great physical events and virtual events. So you know, we really uh, love dealing with you and, and thanks for joining us on today's right. special Thank series you, on Lawrence, yeah. Asian Focus. Thank you, Lawrence, for having me. All right. No problem. Great. Thanks, Jamila. So there you heard from Julie Br- Jamila Ibrahim from Martrade here in Melbourne. She look, looks after the whole APAC region here, does an amazing job. So whatever help you need in trying to tap into the amazing exporters for from Malaysia, speak to Jamila and her team here in Melbourne, and they'll be sure to help you. Coming up after the break, we'll be joined by Fatma Ahmed from MITRE in New South Wales, and we'll talk about the Malaysia investment opportunities as well. So stick around. We'll see you very soon. Do you know the real impacts of your products and supply chain? What about the living and working conditions of the people who make your goods? Companies must now comply with strict modern slavery laws across the globe. Consumers, too, are holding brands accountable for their social and environmental impacts. ATLC is the exclusive representative of the Ethical Trade Alliance in Australia and New Zealand. We can help you take control of your supply chain modern slavery auditing, sustainable procurement accreditation, sustainable freight and logistics programs. Ensure your supply chain is not harming people or the planet. Protect your brand reputation and do the right thing. Contact us at ATLC today and start to reduce the negative impacts of your global supply chains. Welcome back everyone. You're watching our special series on ASEAN in Focus. You've just heard from Jamila Ibrahim here in Martrade in Melbourne. Now we've got the absolute pleasure of being joined by Fatma Ahmed up in Sydney from MITRE. Hi Fatma, how are you? I'm good, thank you Lawrence. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us. Fatma, before we kick off, please tell us a little bit about MITRE and also maybe then kick off and tell us about the specific industry sectors that are important for Malaysia, please. All right. Thank you, Lauren. So uh, MITRE acts as the Malaysian government's principal agency to drive investments into Malaysia. And uh, we continue our efforts to organize and facilitate programs to attract new and existing investors to invest in targeted sectors, which have elements of high technology, capital intensive and knowledge driven industries. For example, in the area of biotechnology, advanced materials, advanced electronics, petrochemicals, pharmaceuticals, medical devices, ICT and aerospace. Some of the mentioned focus sectors are in line with MIDA's ecosystem approach in promoting high value prospects to fill in the gaps in industry's value chain and for companies to remain and grow in Malaysia. Um, as for the services sector, 
there are still immersed opportunities within the areas of principal hubs, logistics, e-commerce, industry 4.0, green technology, and renewable energy. Uh, now, Lawrence, uh, Malaysia's ultimate goal is to move towards strategic economic diversification to increase competitiveness by focusing on complex, knowledge-intensive, and high-end products and services. Our current focus is on Industry 4.0, or we term it as Industry Forward, and Digital Economy, which touch across many industries and sectors in Malaysia. Thanks so much, Fabla. That's a great overview. Can you please share with us your current and future business and investment opportunities specific to Australia? All right. So, uh, Lawrence, the bilateral relations uh, between Malaysia and Australia can be described as broad based and substantive, with both countries enjoying vibrant cooperative relations in a wide range of sectors, namely trade and investment, education, security, defense, and people-to-people -people ties. In terms of investment, up until December 2019, a total of 357 manufacturing projects worth USD 1.31 billion have been implemented, and these projects have created over 24,000 employments. The strong, long standing diplomatic relationship enjoyed by Malaysia and Australia provides a lot of opportunities for us to further enhance cooperation in various sectors. Um, Australia has designated Malaysia as the focus country for 2020 in conjunction uh, of the six anniversary celebration of Australia's diplomatic presence in Malaysia. Having said that, uh, we would like to encourage Australian companies to invest and explore business opportunities in Malaysia, especially in high technology manufacturing projects and emerging industries such as smart manufacturing, digital economy, artificial intelligence, medical technology, and green technology. At the same time, we hope that Australia continues to choose Malaysia as a hub for conducting businesses um, in the ASEAN region. Uh, I would like to also mention some examples. Um, for, firstly, um, Malaysia is, is an esteemed, uh, has an esteemed reputation for an abundance of a well-trained workforce, developed infrastructure, efficient telecommunication system and continued commitment to R&D, presents an attractive location for um, electronics manufacturing services providers. Um, the country's sound information technology infrastructure also enables companies to tap on opportunities in virtual manufacturing and industry 4.0 implementation. Um, these two growth areas represent exciting opportunities arising from the rapid advancements in the cyber world and its borderless society. Second, Malaysia's digitalization landscape is getting more exciting. Almost everyone with access to computer and smartphone is a digital consumer. There is a surge in online shopping, the rise in digital and contactless modes of payment, the advent of digital banking, remote working, distance learning, telehealth, online entertainment, and supply chain disruptions. Now, Malaysia's digital transformation is poised for the big leap forward with many programs in place. The digital economy focus areas are in the area of fintech, drone tech, cybersecurity, digital content, e-commerce, big data analytics, and artificial intelligence, as well as IoT and cloud. Um, thirdly, Malaysia is rich in biodiversity and is home to some of the world's oldest rainforests, making it a treasure trove of more than 2,000 plants with potential, potential medicinal value. Uh, this sheer abundance of raw materials gives Malaysia a competitive advantage against global counterparts in the development of nutraceutical. The pharmaceutical industry in Malaysia has also increased its focus towards the production of herbal products such as nutraceutical health supplements and traditional medicine. Um, fourth, Malaysia has developed a strong ecosystem for medical devices such as medical precision engineering, tool and die making, contract molding and assembly, machinery fabrication, as well as electronics manufacturing services. Indeed, Malaysia is well positioned as an outsourcing destination and global supplier of parts and components 
for high technology operations. Last but not least, in September 2020, Malaysia won the Health and Medical Tourism Destination of the Year title for the fourth time at the International Medical Medical Travel Journal, IMTJ, Medical Travel Awards 2020. Um, Malaysia is positioning itself as a regional hub for, for excellent healthcare. Um, so MIDA works closely with public and private um, stakeholders to scout and facilitate investors, including those seeking to invest in healthcare and medical sectors in Malaysia. Fantastic. It's such a, an exciting opportunity in all those sectors and a, a great leadership role Malaysia's playing in, in all these new technologies. Thanks so much. Fatma, how about how, how best would you describe Malaysia's place within the broader ASEAN market? You know, what are the key strengths and value adds Malaysia brings to this exciting region? Right. Uh, so, Lawrence, um as you're aware, ASEAN has grown to be one of the most targeted regions for trade and investment over the years. Um, the total combined GDP of 10 ASEAN member states uh, was valued at USD 3 trillion in 2018, positioning ASEAN as the fifth largest economy in the world. ASEAN's GDP had been on a positive trend through the period of 2000 until 2018. Uh, foreign direct investment inflows to the region have been on an increasing trend from USD 41.9 billion in 20, 2005 to USD 154.154.7 billion in 2018. In 2018 alone, 15.9% of total ASEAN FDI inflows, or USD 24.5 billion, originated from within the region, an increase of almost 150% the level in 2005. The EU remains as the largest extra ASEAN source of FDI inflows, and followed by Japan by 13.7%, China 6.6%, and Hong Kong 6.6%. Individually, none of the countries are among the top global economies except for Singapore. Collectively, ASEAN can capitalize on its economic strength. Furthermore, all EMS are dependent on external and external trade and thus creating a large integrated market within the region. Malaysia is among the top 10 investing nations in the region and Malaysian companies are major contributors to the economic development in the region. Investments which were initially concentrated in the manufacturing sector are now more diversified. Investments in the services sector are becoming more dominant and diversified as well. Many of Malaysian local banks, telecommunication and healthcare companies and airlines have regional footprints. Um, in addition, Malaysian construction companies are awarded projects to build toll roads, regional administrative capitals and hotels, as well as manage and run airports. Um, besides the big Malaysian players, many Malaysian SMEs are also now investing in the region. It is estimated that there are over 1,000 Malaysian companies operating in the region. Some of the SMEs from Malaysia that have successfully penetrated the regional market and most of these companies are locally incorporated and have assumed uh, a local identity or have joint ventures partners. So um, the various ASEAN free trade agreements, FTAs in short, with China, Japan, the Republic of Korea, Australia, New Zealand, India and Hong Kong, have positioned Malaysia in particular and ASEAN in general in the middle of the global supply chain and linked up a strong trade connection with the major Asian economies while generating new business and investment opportunities. Um, the ASEAN Australia New Zealand FTA is a comprehensive and single undertaking economic agreement uh, that opens up and creates new opportunities for the 650 million peoples of ASEAN, Australia and New Zealand combined. Yeah? With a combined economic output of approximately USD 4.2 trillion via a platform of a more liberal, facilitative and transparent market access and investment regimes among the signatories to the agreement. 
Fantastic. It's just a it's a it's mind boggling when you look at the numbers, the the population, the scale of the ASEAN region, and the important role Malaysia plays in that. Fatma, how has the global pandemic impacted Malaysia, and what are the measures and initiatives that um, that has been undertaken by the government to 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 really assist businesses? Right. Thank you, Lauren. So uh, Malaysia is not spared from the global headwinds uh, combined with the mass effect of COVID-19 pandemic. Nevertheless, Malaysia is a resilient nation and has a diversified economic structure, a sound financial system, an effective public health response and pro proactive macroeconomic support. These have all helped to cushion the blow of the pandemic. Almost all economic sectors have been allowed to operate subject to strict adherence to health and safety guidelines. Um, as restrictions begin to ease coupled with economic stimulus measures by the government, Malaysian economy is expected to pick up again in 2021 with IPI rates rebounding in the second half of the year in tandem with the global demand. The Central Bank of Malaysia um, said that the economy is expected to recover and pose a growth of 5.5% to 8% in 2021, while the IMF and the World Bank expects Malaysia's GDP to grow between 6.3% to 6.9%. Um, notably, this position Malaysia as the fastest growing economy among the ASEAN 5, uh, which comprises of, of um, Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam, and Singapore. Um, COVID-19 pandemic has proven that digitalization and automation is a necessity uh, to ensure business sustainability. The pandemic has clearly impacted business entities and the corporate world. Um, the economic and the health crisis um, has also created an unprecedented change in how companies think about and approach their production processes and business models. Um, it is likely those businesses that are receptive to Industry 4.0 technologies have the ability to speed up their recovery from COVID-19 implications. The Malaysian government launched um, our national policy on Industry 4.0 in October 2018, aimed at boosting digital transformation in the Malaysian manufacturing sector and its related services by facilitating companies to embrace the related technologies in a systematic and comprehensive manner. Um, the end goal is for Malaysian manufacturers or any manufacturers in Malaysia to be stronger through smart technologies. Now, various initiatives have been introduced such as readiness assessment, intervention program, um, high-speed broadband connectivity to potential industrial parks, enhancing com competence centers at the public higher learning institution and reskilling program to address the technology and skill gaps among the industry players, especially among the SMEs. Industry forward readiness assessment um, is a comprehensive program to help companies in the manufacturing sector and its related services to understand their present capabilities in adopting Industry 4.0 uh, by using a predetermined set of indicators and to embark on digitalization. Uh, the hybrid RA model was introduced to gauge the readiness of Malaysian companies to adopt Industry 4.0. Uh, now, companies, including foreign companies, yes, be it MNCs, LLCs, or SMEs, not selected for the RA may undertake assessment with any assessing bodies and be eligible to claim for tax, a tax deduction on the expenditure of RA fees of up to uh, Ringgit Malaysia 27,000. Uh, they can also apply for the intervention grants allocated under the Industry Forward Domestic Investment Strategic Fund and Industry Forward High, High Impact Fund. Uh, and these grants are available as a um, ratio of 60 to 40 matching grant. Uh, MIDA plays a significant role in making Malaysia the preferred destination for quality investments and enhancing the nation's rising status as a globally competitive nation aims to further intensify uh, the implementation of programs to assist companies in adopting advanced technologies um, which are essential to business recovery and provide resilience moving forward. Uh, now more than ever, uh, Lawrence, sustainable development such as Industry 4.0 
has a greater potential to resuscitate the Malaysian economy, improve the quality of life of the population, and ensure safety measures are kept in place. Kept in place. Um, our role remains the same, to usher in more investments into our digital economy and to promote and accelerate the adoption of digitalization and innovative technologies. Great. Thanks so much, Fatma. It, it is really emerging as Malaysia has been that leadership country, not just in Asia, but globally, in all these smart technologies. So it's, it's great to hear all those um, fantastic initiatives, very exciting times. Fatma, with so many disruptions to global supply chains already experienced in 2020, um, you know, many countries are looking to diversify for both sourcing uh, and export markets. What are Malaysia's value propositions to, to capture these interests? Are there government support programs to, to assist Australian companies to trade or invest with Malaysia? Can you please outline some of these uh, support programs? Yes, Lawrence. So uh, being located in the A Asia Pacific Rim, uh, in the center of many ASEAN countries, Malaysia has the privilege to remain as an attractive investment destination, particularly in the favorable investment environment including the availability of excellent infrastructure, telecommunication services, financial and banking services, support, supporting industries, as well as a big pool of talents with skill and trainable workforce. Um, this reveal when Malaysia maintained its strong position globally, ranking the second highest in Southeast Asia and 12 out of 169 countries for the trade connectivity in the DHL Global Connectedness Index GCI report in 2019. It is challenging um, to record the same investment level as seen in 2019. Um, uh, now, nevertheless, to rest, restore investors' confidence, the government has introduced measures to support businesses through the Prihatin stimulus package, which was announced on 27 March 2020, worth of USD 56 billion. One of the measures is the wage subsidy program to help the to help the burden of the employers in retaining their local staffs during these trying times. To support um, to further support the current economic situation, Malaysia has introduced the National Short Term Economic Recovery Plan called Penjana on the fifth of June, twenty twenty. This comprehensive package, amounting to USD eight point two billion aims to regenerate the national economy, focusing on three main components. Uh, number one is empowering the people, second, propelling businesses, and third, stimulating the economy. So under this plan, the government through MIDA has introduced various investment measures to revive Malaysia's economy. Among them are, firstly, the establishment of a dedicated unit aptly named PACHU or the Project Acceleration and Coordination Unit to facilitate the speedy approval and implementation of investment projects in the country. Uh, these initiatives coupled with the new online model uh, module e-manufacturing license enables companies to obtain approvals for their manufacturing projects within two working days. Um, second, zero tax rate for 10 to 15 years for foreign companies which relocate their manufacturing activities with a certain level of investment value. Thirdly, investment tax allowance of 100% for five years for companies with existing Malaysian operations which relocate their overseas manufacturing facility to Malaysia. Fourth, special reinvestment allowance uh, for manufacturing effective from year assessment 2020 to 2022. Uh, fifth, extension of accelerated capital allowance for machinery and equipment, including ICT equipment until 31st December 2021. And last but not least, stamp duty exemption for SMEs on any instruments executed for mergers and acquisition for a period between 1st July 2020 to 30th June 2021. Uh, we believe the implementation of Penjana Package will be the driver for the economy to return to normal. As the economy recovers, we hope uh, that the investment numbers will go back to historical levels. Now, uh, MIDA also actively organizes various, various digital investment promotion programs, uh, such as virtual webinars at local and international platforms, 
engagement sessions with major st stakeholders, namely international chambers, banks, financial institutions, and undertaking media leads. Um, the Malaysian government has also established a one, one stop center OSC at MIDA, effective 2nd October 2020, to evaluate and approve application long term by um, eligible business travelers to enter Malaysia for trade and investment purposes. Um, the initiative is managed by MIDA with representatives from the Immigration Department, uh, Ministry of Health, and Ministry of International Trade and Industry. Um, this, to, this is to ensure the legitimacy uh, and health status of business travellers prior to their entry into Malaysia. Uh, the OSC will assume a critical role in ensuring Malaysia to remain steady on the path of economic recovery and growth uh, by enabling executive and, and uh, essential personnel to travel and continue their work in Malaysia. Yeah, that sounds great. I think that um, the programs, the OSC, they all sound like fantastic support programs that are really compelling for companies to look at Malaysia for all the support, all the, the way to enter that ASEAN market. Finally, Fatma, what are the tips and advice you'd like to provide Australian companies who want to do business with Malaysia? What's a, what, what's, what would you like to tell them? Right. Uh, well, Australian businesses and companies, um, they are welcome to reach out to MIDA Sydney's office for any business inquiries and, and rest assured that this, uh, this uh, office will endeavour to extend our fullest support and facilitation to ensure that um, the potential investors need in doing business in Malaysia are met. Um, for example, uh, we'll be able to connect uh, the potential investor to the relevant stakeholders um, to obtain as many and as significant information for their business decision. Um, also, um, um, the, they are advised to reach out to Australian companies as well as business council which have presence in Malaysia to gain insights and on the ground experience about doing business in Malaysia. Uh, my advice is ask as many questions and leave no doubt behind. Uh, last but not least, MIDA is now on various um, social media platforms such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Um, so please, you're welcome to follow us on all these social media platforms for real-time updates and information about, about the investment landscape in Malaysia. Fantastic. It's always great to speak to you, Fatma. I know firsthand with so many great feedback from Australian companies who've worked with you and the team up there in Sydney and how you know you do such an amazing job to open up all these fantastic programs and opportunity going into Malaysia. So congratulations on the amazing work you do. Thanks so much for joining me today on this special series on ASEAN in Focus. And we very much look forward to speaking to you again soon and staying up to date with all the, the latest programs uh, that you roll out across Australia. All right. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Thanks, Fatma. Take care. We'll speak again very soon. So there you heard from Fatma Ahmed from MIDA up in Sydney. As you've heard, they've got some amazing programs, really great support programs to get Australian companies into the Malaysian market, but the broader ASEAN region as well. So reach out to MIDA. Uh, you can't go wrong. They'll, they'll definitely steer in the right direction and make all these important introductions and connections for you. Coming up after the break, we'll be speaking to one of the other ASEAN countries and all, all about their opportunities as well and how they can put, put in place their position across that ASEAN region. Stay, stay tuned. We'll see you very soon. Do you know the real impacts of your products and supply chain? What about the living and working conditions of the people who make your goods? Companies must now comply with strict modern slavery laws across the globe. Consumers too are holding brands accountable for their social and environmental impacts. ATLC is the exclusive representative of the Ethical Trade Alliance in Australia and New Zealand. We can help you take control of your supply chain modern slavery auditing, 
Sustainable Procurement Accreditation, Sustainable Freight and Logistics Programs. Ensure your supply chain is not harming people or the planet. Protect your brand reputation and do the right thing. Contact us at ATLC today and start to reduce the negative impacts of your global supply chains. Welcome back everyone. You're watching our special series on ASEAN in Focus. You've just heard all about Malaysia. Now we're going live to Cambodia and we're joined by Consular for Commercial Affairs, Saryong Kim from the Royal Embassy of Cambodia. Hi Saryong, how are you? Fine, thank you, Lauren. Thanks so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure to have you uh, on our show with us to talk about all the amazing things that are happening in Cambodia. So, Saryon, can I ask, what are the key inbound and outbound industry sectors for Cambodia? Thank you, Lauren, for your interview. And for our export and import sector, we are mostly export uh, manufacturing industry sector like garment, footwear, bag, and also uh, a little bit industry bicycle, wood, rubber, and we do import uh, material that support textile and garment sector. And we do import uh, machinery and heavy industry. And Saryong, how would you describe Cambodia's position within the ASEAN region? What are the, the key strengths and values that you bring to the region overall? Uh, yes, for Cambodia, we are uh, located almost in the middle of ASEAN country. And we do have four special assets that are uh, uh, very special with other country, like we are a young population country. We do not have a calamity and we have political stability and we do provide pro-business approach. And our GDP increase almost around 7.1 percent um, consecutively from 2011 to 2019. So our GDP almost uh, strained around 7 percent. And yeah, Cambodia economy is growing rapidly on the back of the following main sector construction, manufacturing service, tourism, agriculture, food, beverage, and education. And yeah, we are a young country among our ASEAN, and we do have uh, around 15 billion people. So that's why we are a lucky country and also a rapid uh, ec uh, economic growth among our ASEAN. Yeah, it's definitely a very rapidly growing economy, great young population. So there's a lot of you know, amazing opportunities with, with Cambodia. Can you share with us, Sarong, you know, specifically around the current and future trade and investment opportunities between Cambodia and Australia? Yeah, uh, for future and current approach uh, between uh, two countries, uh, Cambodia, we do have a lot of, uh, how we call, uh, strategy to promote investment and also business uh, people to do business in Cambodia. And currently, we do uh, provide, how we call, uh, online business registration. So everybody can register their business anywhere and anytime. And this link, uh, it connects to our competent authority, for example, like Ministry of Commerce, connect with Ministry of Finance, Taxation, and Ministry of Labor. So this uh, uh, website, like www.registrationservice.gov.ka, provides you a good facility for your registration. 
and also in terms of investment, we do have a council for the development of Cambodia. And this uh, council provides one-stop service, investment incentive and support, and also investment after care service. And for uh, agreement, we do have bilateral agreement uh, on promotion and protection of investment between uh, Cambodia and uh, the 29 countries, and especially include Australia. So we are welcome Australian investor to invest our country because we do have agreement to support you and protect you. Fantastic. Yeah, I think there's... Um... And we do provide some incentive uh, that's, uh, to promote investment that the incentive are cooperate in contact 20% tax holiday, 0% up to 9 years, or special depreciation. And second, full import duty exemption on production equipment, construction material, and raw material for export processing. Thirdly, we do provide export tax exemption. And moreover, in investment guarantee, we do not provide uh, discrimination, nationalization, a requirement for local equity participation. We do not require price control on production or service, and we do not restrict for foreign exchange, and we do not uh, control capital, your capital. So uh, for the Cambodia investment, we do provide, we call special economic zone. So this special economic zone, uh, they will get incentive on one stop service located on that zone. And we do provide VAT suspension for export oriented qualified investment project. And this special economic zone located mostly near the border of our Cambodian country because our border, our border connect with Thailand and also Vietnam. And our special economic zone located near their border. So it's uh, easy for the business and also investor to uh, transport and to trade their uh, product to that uh, country. And also for our uh, priority sector policy from 2015 to 2029, we do have five priority sector. And firstly, uh, we focus on new industry like machinery assembly, mechanic, electronic, electric equipment assembly, means of transport assembly and natural resource processing. Secondly, we focus on SMEs in all sectors like track and medical equipment production, construction material, packaging equipment for export, furniture manufacturing, and industrial equipment. Thirdly, we focus on agro-industry production for export and domestic use. Both various types of supporting industry like agriculture, tourism, and textile sectors, as well as for industrial saving, regional production, chain with either global market or global value chain. Finally, it be focused on industry of future strategic importance like ICT, energy, heavy industry, cultural, historical, and traditional handicraft, and also the green technology. Wonderful, great. Yeah, so that's why we like to promote our, uh, how we call, investment policy and also uh, business. And recently we do I mean, our investment law. So we hope that the new investment law will 
focus and promote more investor. And regarding to the uh, Australian and Cambodia uh, business, we do in, uh, for the both way trade the the both country increase our trade. So I think for the Cambodian product and Australian product, uh, according to the Australian Trade and Investment Commission, in 2016, Australia ranked 18 of Cambodia's most important trade partner in both direction of trade. So we are most uh, joyful with Cambodia product and also Australian product. Uh, mostly we import from Australia, cereal preparation, beef, fruit, meal, pharmaceutical, machinery, equipment, and parts. And Australia also enjoy our product like garment, food, bear, bag, and our rice. So we are thankful for Australia for the import product from Cambodia. And, uh, Australia and Cambodia enjoy a close relationship and there are many opportunities in industry, including premium food and wine, agribusiness, education, banking and finance, and government. Yeah. Wonderful. There's, um, there are a lot of great synergies between the two countries and I think those five focus industries match very well to some of Australia's strengths. And I, I'm sure there'll be many viewers watching this episode who would like to talk to, to you and your ministry about how they can get more information around investment and trade opportunities with Cambodia. What I'd like to ask you as well, uh, Sir, is about now this global pandemic that we've all recently impacted us here, what's the current business climate like and the consumer climate like in Cambodia as a result of the recent pandemic? Uh, yes, the uh, pandemic is not only affect Cambodia, it's globally affect. So for us, we have a serious effect in livelihood, local industry and economy in general. It disrupts key driver of the economy. Around 70% of our country growth and almost 40% of paid employment. And the problem mainly caused from supply chain disruption in China and the consolidation of the order from the EU and the US market. By the end of June, around 180 factories have suspended with more than 150,000 workers has been laid off. And according to ASEAN Development Bank, ADP, they provide their uh, projection that Cambodia GDP growth will drop from 7.1% in 2019 to 2.3% in 2020. But um, the projection also show us that uh, in 2021, our economy will grow to 5.7%. So we hope our economy will uh, be better after the epidemic. Yeah. I was going to ask Sarong, so you mentioned the disruption and all the countries have been impacted by supply chain disruptions. And so many companies, not just in Australia, but around all the Western markets, they're looking to diversify suppliers and even export customers. Have you noticed that there has been an increase in inquiries within, with, within Cambodia, not just from Australia, but from all other countries as well? Uh, yeah. Recently, we do have uh, our trade agreement, for example, like ANAFTA, uh, at the, our ASEAN member with other countries like ASEAN China, ASEAN Japan, ASEAN Korea. And recently, we do 
have accept. So we hope that this kind of agreement will help us to promote uh, our trade in uh, the next few years after the pandemic. Yeah, fantastic. And finally, you know, there's so many great opportunities that we've heard about through you today. So, as I said before, there'll be many viewers watching this episode who may not have thought about Cambodia before and they might have done other business within Asia or even within ASEAN. What tips and advice would you like to give companies, especially Australian companies, on how best they can succeed and do business with Cambodia? Yeah, uh, Cambodia is, uh, as I mentioned, located in the middle of our ASEAN. So it is easily to assess every country uh, in our ASEAN. And also Cambodia is a young population country. So we have a lot of level force to support and to work for the uh, company and also the industry that investors would like to invest in our country. And we do have our five priority sectors like new industry, small in our sector, agro industry production, various types of supporting industry, and also our future strategic important as the heavy industry, ICT, energy, and also green technology. So we would like to, uh, how we call, to have a wonderful world for the future. And also we do provide, how we call, the uh, uh, online business registration that support uh, our business to, to register from everywhere and anytime. And the process is very uh, quick. You don't need to wait for the long time and you don't need to go to Cambodia for physical registration. Great. And we uh, hope Australian will enjoy doing business with Cambodia and investment in Cambodia because uh, Cambodia has a lot of opportunity to do business and investment in service, in education, in agriculture, and in tourism. As you know, Cambodia, we have a lot of historical location and also temple that provide a lot of uh, uh, experience in our classic uh, cultural in Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful country and I'm sure that uh, it's always a pleasure to do business there but as you say you can combine that business with some great lifestyle experiences as well so thank you so much sorry Kim. it's been amazing to have you on today's episode uh, as i said earlier i'm sure there's many companies out there and people who are watching this episode who would love to get in touch with you to find out about those five growth industry sectors to find out how they can get more information take advantage of some of those incentives that the government's offering and to really try and build those opportunities, relationships, and bridges for the future between both countries. Thank you very much, Roland, for your kind uh, interview and also your time. Th thank you so much. We look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Thank you. So there you heard from Sarian Kem, who's the Consular for Commercial Affairs at the Royal Embassy of Cambodia, uh, a wonderful country, a wonderful range of opportunities that uh, as all Australians and other countries diversify their supply chains for sourcing, for investment, for export opportunities. Cambodia is one of those countries you really should focus, take a, a focus on and have a look and see how they can help grow your business and grow your international brand as well. So thanks so much for joining today's episode. We'll be back with another ASEAN Focus special episode very soon. Do you know the real impacts of your products and supply chain? What about the living and working conditions of the people who make your goods? Companies must now comply with strict modern slavery laws across the globe. Consumers too are holding brands accountable for their social and environmental impacts.
ATLC is the exclusive representative of the Ethical Trade Alliance in Australia and New Zealand. We can help you take control of your supply chain, modern slavery auditing, sustainable procurement accreditation, sustainable freight and logistics programs. Ensure your supply chain is not harming people or the planet. Protect your brand reputation and do the right thing. Contact us at ATLC today and start to reduce the negative impacts of your global supply chains.